You know, as far as I'm concerned, all of this SEO and ranking a website in the top 10 of the organic listings is all but pretty much over with. What you should really be focusing now is on the Google business profile. But does that mean that you shouldn't build out a website that's SEO optimized? It means quite the opposite. Let me explain. What up there guys, this here once again with Get Busy LLC, helping local businesses, contractors, and home service business owners understand this internet and show them how to get more leads using it. This video, I want to talk about ranking in the top 10 of the organic search results on how I starting to see the writing on the wall that those pretty much is going to be over with fairly, fairly soon. Now, why do I say that? For the longest time, when I started my journey of learning this SEO stuff, building out websites for contractors, all this stuff, I started in the rank and rent model of websites. It was very, very important to work the rankings, to work the SEO, to do all the stuff for your website in order to get it into the top 10 of the organic part of the listings of Google. Basically, the way the page is built out these days is when you go on the homepage of a website, let you do any search in any town, Usually, as soon as you hit enter, you're going to see the top part of it. It's going to be full of like Google guarantees, the LSAs, that's what they call them. Sometimes you'll see the ads right underneath that part. Then you'll finally see the organic listings of the local area. And then you scroll down further. Sometimes you're going to get some questions. And then right after that, you're finally going to get the organic listings. And for this longest time, I fought tooth and nail to get websites to rank in that top 10 underneath the Google map listings. But as times progressed, and I've noticed that more and more people are using their smartphone, I would say that's probably close to 90% now are doing any type of search. They're all doing it on their smartphone. And these smartphones, as awesome as they are, these screens are tiny. And all of that noise at the top, all of the advertisement, all of the LSAs, all of the ads, all that crap is taking up most of that screen. So when you finally scroll down a little bit further, you finally get to the organic parts where I still strongly believe most people go because that's where I go. I hate advertisement. I don't click on ads. But any further than that, forget about it. This is even pointless to try even get into the stop the top part. But does that mean that you should stop any of these SEO stuff that you were doing before in order to rank a website? It means quite the opposite. What I'm seeing now and like I said, I have uh, most of the stuff, like I said, all this SEO stuff to me is all theory. It's a bunch of BS, all that stuff. I always try to place myself as a human being and a search engine trying to serve a human being. The way that I see the search engine working now, I see Google trying to get people not to even go to websites. What I see Google doing is I see those map listings as Google reading the website for that potential customer. So when somebody's looking for a local service, like say, for example, carpet cleaning near them, Google's going to scour local websites in the area that's going to give that searcher the best results and relay that information through that map listing. So when I pull that up on my phone, I scroll on that phone, but I actually click on the map listing itself, click the call now button or whatever it might be, but rarely actually even visit the website. If I do website visit the website, it's still going to be useful. But I think Google's reading those websites for people because Google wants you to stay on the platform of Google and the map listings is part of their platform. So you as a business owner basically have to pay, play their game. If you play their game correctly, they're going to push you into this map listing. And from all the stuff that I keep studying, I keep learning the stuff, I learn more and more as time progresses. And all this AI stuff starting to take over. It's another reason I think those organic parts are complete garbage now. Not complete garbage. You're still going to get some leads here. But as the years go by, they're, in my opinion, it's going to be obsolete. Nobody's going to go on that crap. They're going to go on the map listings. So this is the way that I'm starting to structure websites, designs, everything. Everything's designed not to rank the website, not to rank the pages, not to rank the location pages. It's to rank that damn Google business profile. Everything I do from this point forward is to rank the Google business profile. So this is the best way, the way that I'm starting to learn how you should structure your website for the best probability of making that happen. Let me show you. So this is the way that you should structure your website to give your Google business profile the best chances to get it found in your local area. So for this example, I'm going to use paving company, a paving contractor, but whatever your service is, say you're a junk removal, a carpet cleaning, home remodeler, roofer, whatever it might be, state what your service is and the exact location where you're providing that service. So I'm going to basically show you guys the structure and the outline of what you can visualize what your website should look like. So you have your home page here. You're going to have your about page. You're going to have your contact page. 
uh, just typical stuff that the search engines have looked for 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 decades now. And then what you want to do is you want to start adding service pages for major categories that you do. Again, I'm going to use this example of paving because it's easy to use as an example. You can use this for your industry as well. So you can see what you need to do. You start building out for in this situation is the paving contractor and you build out a service page for driveways in their location, parking lots in their location, repairs in their location, road construction in their location, seal coating their location, striping in their location. And then the next thing you need to do, well, this is the way that I do it. I start adding additional location pages. So I'll add a location page that's near their location, another location that's near their location to basically tell Google that's where this geographically business is located. And then what I do, I make sure that this page connects to one another. They're all interlinking. So there's a link that goes right back to this page. There's a link that goes back to the home page. So that's the structure of the website. This is what the Google search engine going to see when they crawl the website. They're going to see the structure of your website. And this is what you connect to your Google business profile. And this is what the Google business profile is going to read when people do searches for a paving contractor, driveway repair, sealed coating, striping a parking lot, whatever it might be. This business profile is going to read any one of this, these pages and show that you provide all of these services. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to take things a step further. So you have all of your locations, all of your service pages, again, driveways, parking lots, repairs, roads, seal coating, striping, all of that stuff, right? Now, what you want to do is you want to start creating sub pages, subcategories of that particular service. So for example, let's say this is paving services, Fresno, California, asphalt driveways in Fresno, California. Now are you going to build a service sub service pages underneath this main page? So now you're going to have driveway overlays in Fresno, California, driveway resurfacing, Fresno, California, driveway repairs, Fresno, California, driveway seal coating, new driveway installation, everything under the umbrella of driveways. And then you're going to do the same thing for parking lots, parking lots, resurfacing, overlays, repair, seal coating, and new installation of parking lots. And you keep doing that with all the pages. If they are, there's opportunities for subcategories. Some are not going to have any and some will. But the reason that you want to do this is because with that listing, the more pages you have, because when you create this Google business profile, it's going to allow you to create basically a shit ton of, of categories. If you create all those shit tons of categories, you can start placing some of those pages under the, the, the categories of some of the main pages that you have. I hope that makes sense. So what you're doing, just creating a huge structure of a website. So the structure is going to start to look something like this. So this is a paving contractor in Fresno. They do all these major services of paving in Fresno. And here's the subcategories under this, for example, parking lot. And this one, for example, driveways. When I build out the road construction, it'd be the same thing. Uh, striping, seal coating, some of those might be a little bit different. So what you're doing is creating a shit ton of pages that this Google business profile is going to read and showcase to your potential customer. So now let's say that you're a business owner and you want to start marketing online, doing SEO stuff for the map listings in multiple locations. Now, this is the way that you should structure your website. So let's say you do have a business location in a town that's 30 miles away. I recommend that if you're a, 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 any type of contractor, build out your page for your town and if you're doing business in a town that's 20, 30, 40 miles away, go out there and rent an office, get a business license, do whatever you have to do to create another business profile again, because the rankings underneath the map listings are becoming obsolete. And in the future, I just see them completely getting wiped out, being completely useless. So if you have another location in another town, you can start pushing your listing in that other town and ranking and get leads in that town. So how should you structure your website to rank for this town as well? So here's the structure you need to do. Do you remember how we build out location pages? You take one of those location pages. For example, this is Fresno again. There's a town called Clovis that's about 20 miles away, 30 miles away. We'll just say 30 miles away. So now you build out a, pull out this page here and you start building out asphalt pavings in Clovis, California. And then what you need to do is you start to build pages for that specific city. So you do driveway paving in Clovis, California, parking lot paving, Clovis, California, repairs, roads, seal coating, striping services in Clovis, California. 
all under the umbrella of this location page. And if you have to take things even further and create even sub pages underneath that, you do that too. And that is what you connect to this listing. You connect this page exactly to this location. Let me show you an example of this. So this contractor here does asphalt paving in Roanoke, Virginia. So this is his home page. There's his about page, here's his contact page. There are his services right here. He's got his six services, eight major services that he provides. We are going to build out subcategories as time goes on. Oh, he's got the foundation set, but he's got location pages here, just like I showed you in the outline in the, in the previous clip. Now, when you click on Moneta, what he went out and did is exactly what I told him. Go out there and get another listing. Go out and get another office. Get another phone number. Get another business license. Do whatever you have to do to get another business profile in that area because that's the area you want to do more business in because this Google business profile is not going to go any further than 20, 30 miles. So we build him his other page and Moneta. And what we ended up doing is creating six additional service pages, but specific for that town. So for example, he does asphalt repairs, asphalt repair experts in Moneta, Virginia. Now it's under the umbrella of his Moneta page. And as you can see, there is ways with WordPress to create a whole new menu here. This menu specifically for this page, this footer specifically for this page. So in essence, we're almost building another website inside of his main website specifically to rank this listing that's 20, 30 miles away from his original business listing. So that's how you should structure a website to give it the most potential to get that business profile in front of the customers looking for the services you have in your local market. So there you go. To have any fighting chance to get that listing for your business to show up in that organic pack and that three pack, especially on people's phones, that's the way that I starting to structure websites from all the stuff that I'm continuous to learn here about this SEO stuff, especially understanding that that organic stuff is starting to die off. But still, even if you structure your website correctly, there's still other factors in getting that business profile into that three pack. You know, you still got to fill out that business profile correctly, 100% the right categories. You got to get those reviews. You got to upload those pictures. You got to get some citations done. You got to start getting some backlinking. People got to know who you are in your local community as a local business in order to rank in that Google business profile these days. And this is why I see this SEO stuff really, really changing going forward as it's more and more focused on the mobile and the organic map listing and getting underneath the organic part is just not as important as it used to be. But still, you guys as contractors for a lot of services, the competition is still small, still is pretty low. But as the years go on, months go on, it's going to get more and more competitive. It's going to get tougher and tougher to get into that little three pack before. Like I said, you're competing against 10 others. It was not too difficult to get into those 10. Now you're only competing against three and Google's only looking for the cream of the crop, top dogs in every industry, in every city to just to place them there in that three pack of Google. So if you guys need any help with your business and getting it found in that Google business profile, you guys want to learn the exact process that I use for all the businesses that I've helped over the years. And you kind of want to do this for yourself. You can check out my little group down below. You can join. I show you everything that I know, all the steps my templates, my designs, my websites, the structures, everything you need to get your business into that three pack of Google, the backlinking, all that stuff. All of that stuff's in the description below and the link there. You guys don't want to deal with any of this crap. Want somebody else to do it for you. You can go ahead and book a call with me in that same link. There's a place where you can book a call with me. Maybe I can help you out and do this stuff for you so you don't have to deal with it. And I can show you what it would around how much it would cost to get something like that going for your business. And if you guys want to see the top six things, which is what I talked about, one of those is right here on this video I just talked about. You want to see the other five things that I think Google's looking for to get a business into that organic three pack of Google. You can check out that video right here. And I, I'm going through it thoroughly to show you guys what I think it really takes. And that's all I got for you guys today. Until next time.